on, I'm assuming. Hello, and welcome to today's forum featuring candidates for the mayor of Sacramento for the November 4th general election. I am Tricia Erhammer, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and moderator of today's forum. Today's forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. An audience here is viewing today's forum live in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. It is also being broadcast to viewers at home. And it is being taped for numerous rebroadcast times on Metro Cable Channel 14. You may find a full listing of rebroadcast times by watching Metro Cable 14, the bulletin board between 6 and 8 <coughs> a.m. each morning. It is also available on webcast at sacmetrocable.tv. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of men and women established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation in government. The League does not support nor oppose or evaluate candidates or political parties. State and local leagues have sponsored debates and forums such as this since its founding back in 1920. The format of today's forum <coughs> will be that candidates would receive a one and a half minute opening statement followed by a question and answer period. We have panelists who are with us to ask those questions. <coughs> the questions have been reviewed by the League of Women Voters, and we will have a closing statement. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the candidate for mayor. With us today is Mayor Heather Fargo. Welcome to the forum. Thank you. Also running is Kevin Johnson, <coughs> who declined our invitation to join us today. I would also like to introduce our panelists at this time from the Sacramento Bee, Mary Lynn Valinga. And we are happy that from Sac State, we have two professors, Jim Cox, professor of government, and Kimberly Nalder, professor of American government. Thank you for joining us today and preparing the questions. We are now ready to begin our forum. Heather Fargo, please offer an opening statement. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me thank the League of Women Voters for this great tradition of uh, offering an opportunity for candidates to, to share their vision, uh, their record, their hopes for the city and for the community uh, with the community. Uh, and I really appreciate especially the fact that this is going to be replayed and people will be allowed to see this from the comfort of their home, uh, learning more about the candidates. Um, I'm disappointed my opponent chose not to, not to come. <coughs> and I apologize for my cough and my cold, um, but I think it's very important for us to share with the community. <coughs> I'm going to have to stop. I apologize. <coughs> I'm afraid both of us are suffering from colds today. So. I apologize. Um, I know that part of what we're going to be talking about today um, is the past and what we've been able to do in the city of Sacramento. Um, I'm actually more interested in focusing as well on the future of Sacramento and where we're planning on going. So I'm very much looking forward to the questions, and I guess I will stop my opening statement at this point and uh, give myself a chance to listen to a question. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Lynn, will you please <coughs> direct a question to Heather? I'll try to make it a really long question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you look forward uh, to a potential third term as mayor, are there any new initiatives that you'd like to pursue if reelected? Actually, there are many new initiatives I would love to uh, take on uh, once I'm a reelected mayor of the city of Sacramento. And one of the ones that I'm most excited about uh, is a vocational education program that I would like to start uh, with the building trades and with other people involved in 
all kinds of real jobs in Sacramento, which would be an after-school vocational program similar to our START program, which works at the elementary school level. Uh, this would be geared towards junior high and high school students and would focus on things like wood shop and metal shop and arts, um, home economics, uh, sewing and tailoring, and all kinds of things that are really job-focused. I think one of the real emphasis uh, that has to be in the future is really focusing on our youth and giving them hope, making sure that they understand that they can, in fact, have the skills to find a job, that that job is here in Sacramento. Uh, we've worked very hard in economic development and bringing jobs to Sacramento. We now need to connect our youth with those jobs. Thank you. Jim, would you please offer a question? <coughs> Mayor Fargo, one of the um, criticisms of the city has been that the mayor doesn't really have any authority to, to lead the council. Um, there's been some talk about moving to a strong mayor form of government. Would that be something that you favor? <coughs> the question doesn't actually have me choked up, but <laughs> <coughs> having a sense of humor is an important part of being mayor. Um, I think that the current system that we have, the council manager form of government, has actually worked very well for Sacramento. I think that what it requires in order to be effective is a strong mayor, a strong city manager, two people that communicate, that work well together, uh, that have a similar vision for the city, and frankly are committed to getting things done and know how to do it. Um, I think that there's a lot of interest in exploring other forms of government I don't think that the current form of government is necessarily broken, but I think that it's worth having a discussion with the community about. Uh, what I've proposed is a blue ribbon commission uh, or some kind uh, to look at the charter uh, decide whether or not there are some alternatives that we think might be more effective for Sacramento, have that discussion, of course, with the public, uh, just talk with people who are both experts in government uh, and governance, as well as the community at large, to find out what else we'd want to do differently with our charter and with our government here. Um, after that kind of a discussion, obviously a charter change would require a vote of the people, so we would have to determine which of the changes we're looking at would make the most sense. Um, I personally don't think the current system um, is, is all that broken, but there are certainly some times, uh, many times actually, where the mayor serves as the lightning rod for the city, uh, is blamed for what goes wrong, but has virtually no authority to fix it. Um, things that certain departments do or don't do uh, often get blamed on the, on the uh, mayor as opposed to the city manager or the department head themselves. So the accountability issue is somewhat blurred, and um, it's, it's difficult for a lot of people who haven't worked in local government to really understand how cities work and what the real mayor of the job is, real job of the mayor is. Thank you. Kimberly? It's, it seems that um, some of the excitement around uh, your opponent's campaign comes from this idea that Sacramento should somehow be more visible on a national stage, um, get away from his kind of cow town image and um, work with connections nationally and so forth. What would you do in your third term to work on those sorts of measures? Well, actually, I think it's sort of a false notion that Sacramento is not on the map, uh, ha having been on the map since 1849 and the discovery of gold. Um, Sacramento is well known throughout the nation. Uh, I have many national connections, uh, and in fact, Sacramento, during my term as mayor, has really come into its own, I think, in a lot of ways, being recognized as a quality tourist destination, um, being listed in such magazines as Men's Fitness uh, and um, uh, some of the dog magazines as being the best place to get fit, the best place to own a dog, um, because we have an incredible quality of life here. Uh, Sacramento is the 14th most sustainable city of the top 50 cities in the nation uh, because of our green economy, because of city innovation, because of the workforce, the education, the job opportunities, uh, and our commitment to a, a green and sustainable community. Uh, we're also listed by Kipling, Kiplinger's Magazine as the seventh or the eighth most livable city in the nation, the only city in California to be recognized in the top 10 most livable cities was Sacramento. So most of my job, a lot of my job as mayor, has been really trying to build up the self-esteem of this city to get us to recognize what an incredibly unique and wonderful place Sacramento is. Uh, and I think under my leadership, we have brought Sacramento alive with the arts. Uh, we have continued to keep our place as the seat of government and a government town. Um, but we certainly now are also the regional hub for education as well as for medical services. So the job opportunities are here. The quality of life is here. Um, and I think the only 
only people that think Sacramento is still a cow town are people that don't spend enough time here. Maybe people that don't get out to second Saturdays and don't go to the farmers markets and don't take advantage of the incredible arts opportunities we have, uh, don't enjoy a city of trees with all the parks that we have and all the amenities. So I think it's an out no, no, outdated um, notion that we're a cow town or just a stop between Tahoe and San Francisco. We are the city. Uh, we are a quality place to live and I think we've been discovered. Thank you. Mary Lynn. Speaking of the mayor as a lightning rod, mm -hmm. um, I feel that I want to ask this question because a lot of people do bring this up in relation to the mayor's job. The city utilities department has been engulfed in scandal during the past year. An audit found that management was so lax the department couldn't account for 4,500 water meters and at least one former employee has been implicated in a black market salvage scheme. How did this problem go unnoticed for so long by the city council, including yourself, and has the utilities department situation changed the level of scrutiny that you apply to other parts of the city bureaucracy? Well, the, the utilities department problems have certainly changed the way that, that I and I think the city council and probably the community at large look at the city of Sacramento uh, and look at the need to hold people accountable. Um, as mayor, I have, uh, when I first heard about this issue with the water meters, I sat down with the city manager and said, frankly, this is unacceptable. And if people are stealing from the city of Sacramento, they need to be held accountable. They need to be either fired or put in jail. Um, several uh, utilities department employees have lost their jobs. We do have one who's either in jail or going to jail. Uh, we are holding people accountable. Um, what, what seemed to have happened is that while the council had put the policies in place and the city manager certainly knew of those policies and, and passed them on, the employees within the department were not following the policy and were keeping that information from the managers, who of course then couldn't tell us. Um, we've only been in the water meter business now for a few years, so, so that part of the problem is relatively new. Uh, what we have done to solve that is we hired someone to help find the missing meters, and we have. I think we've found almost all of them, except for a little less than 100 um, out of the 4,000 missing meters. Uh, none of them were in my home. Um, and <laughs> we um, also have, uh, I asked the city manager and we got the council approval a few weeks ago to hire two more auditors in the city so we could systematically go through all of the departments on both the programmatic uh, and a fiscal basis. We're, we're doing inventory control, we're doing training, uh, and we're fixing the problem. Thank you. Jim? Um, Mayor Fargo, the city of Sacramento has encouraged developers to submit plans for permits prior to the mandatory increase in base flood elevation in the Natomas Basin. Um, critics have argued that this is irresponsible by putting property and lives in, in danger. How do you respond to that? Uh, it's a good question. The flood protection, I believe, uh, is the most important public safety and economic issue facing the city of Sacramento, and I devoted um, a lot of time uh, as a public official to being on the flood control agency, moving forward in progress there. Um, in terms of the moratorium, which we anticipate December 8th in the Natomas Basin, um, some people in our uh, Development Services Department and Economic Development Department thought it was a good idea to rush permits. Um, I do not. Uh, what we have done in Natomas is basically, and part of this is, in, is tied to the housing mortgage um, crisis, which means that we're not having a lot of new residential construction at all. Uh, the few homes that are being built out there now are really follow-ups of permits that had been issued earlier. Uh, commercial development has been allowed to proceed because there are requirements in place that allow th that require them to have basically flow through buildings and we're not putting additional people at risk by adding commercial uses into Natomas. The real risk comes when you add more residential, comp more residents uh, and that has been reduced. Thank you. Kimberly? You mentioned Second Saturday is sort of one of the things that's going well in Sacramento and, and brings us up to a more um, world-class status. It's almost gone too well in recent iterations. Um, there have been started to be complaints by neighbors that it's too loud and there's congestion and the parking is difficult. Are there any plans or would you have any plans to alleviate that traffic, maybe spread it out to other parts of the city and, and sort of expand um, the Second Saturday beyond just Midtown? 
Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Second Saturday, I think, is one of our successes in Sacramento, and it's been written up in a number of magazines, and it's one of the reasons why we're an even more fun place to visit uh, now than we were before. Um, but with any good event comes people, and with people usually come cars and traffic and parking. Uh, and so that's sort of uh, one of the, uh, the evil byproducts of having a successful event uh, is the need to provide for parking transportation. Uh, we have worked with the state to resolve the parking issue. We now have $2 parking every evening for second Saturday. I'm not sure you're going to get much cheaper than that. Uh, we have paid attention to the traffic patterns and uh, realigned uh, where people drive and which streets are closed. Uh, and we are looking at a number of different neighborhoods to expand Second Saturday to neighborhoods that could really benefit economically from not just additional art galleries and, and a focus on the arts, uh, but also on that the people power, the, the economic value of having a number of people in one place who want to go out to eat, who want to see their friends and socialize. Um, and so we are monitoring it, and we're, we've got it under control, and I think it's going to continue to be excess, a success. Uh, but it's an opportunity for us to utilize that mechanism uh, into other neighborhoods, particularly Oak Park, Del Paso Boulevard, um, areas where we have, and Broadway, where we have both the restaurants, the interest from the business community, as well as the opportunity. Thank you. Mary Lynn? Your opponent has said that he will not make any additional cuts to police and fire budgets. You have declined to make such a pledge. Why not? Because it's absurd. Um, the notion that in a city that has a general fund which pays 72 percent for police and fire to say that if we were to have another big budget deficit that we would wipe out every other department uh, or certain departments or reduce their budgets by 40 or 50 percent uh, is just not what the people in the city of Sacramento want. Um, public safety is my number one priority. It's the council's number one priority. It's the city of Sacramento's number one priority. It is what people expect their government to do. Um, what we are looking at instead, um, we're certainly trying to hold on to as many police officers as we can. Uh, we're hoping to expand that. We just got one recent grant. I'm certainly hoping that with the new administration in Washington, that will hopefully have a domestic agenda that will include supporting police services in cities uh, that we'll be able to add to our police force. Um, but to make a, a blanket um, announcement that you will never cut a person in public safety totally undermines uh, the notion of a full-service city. Um, public safety is more than, than just having a police officer who can respond after the fact. Um, and violence takes place in, in every community. Um, crime has always been a problem in Sacramento. I think it always will be. Um, but we will never be able to have enough police officers. We will never have an officer in every home, uh, on every block. Um, and frankly, I think as we look forward to uh, this uh, economic depression that we're in, um, I'm afraid that we may see more violence because when people um, lose their jobs, they get scared. When they get scared, they get angry and uh, tempers fly. Um, so we are doing our best. We have a very well-equipped and very smart police department. Uh, we have a good police chief who is doing his best to try to um, mobilize the units where they can be. Um, but without a new infusion of funding um, from either the citizens of Sacramento um, or the state or federal government, um, we do not have the resources to have at more police officers than we currently have. Uh, we'll do our best to try to, to add more uh, when funding is available, and it's certainly a priority of mine to make sure that every person in Sacramento is safe. That is one of our prime goals. Thank you. We have time for one or two more questions. Jim? Okay. Um, this has been a contentious campaign, and members of the city council have split their support between you and, um, and your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, and you stated that much of the power of the mayor is, is informal and relies on good relations relationships with other members of the city council. Sure. Um, if you were to win, I mean, how do you plan or how do you see yourself getting past this campaign and moving forward? Well, they, I think there's a, a number of ways of kind of looking at that. At this point in time, uh, I am very proud to have the support of five members of the city council, of Ray Trethaway, um, of Rob Fong, of Lauren Hammond, of Kevin McCarty, uh, and also uh, of Bonnie Pinnell. 
uh, that is a majority of the council. Um, I do believe that the relationships between the other members of the council might be strained at this point, but we all have the city's interest in mind and we will work together. Uh, we will get the city's business done. Um, I, I, when I first became elected mayor, I hadn't had the support of the full city council at that point, uh, and we got down to working together. We spent some time setting goals and we, we move forward. Um, my job is, is to work for everybody in the city of Sacramento. Every resident, regardless of who their council member is, deserves my respect and my assistance and, and my efforts. So um, I will be able to work either with or without those council members to get the city's job done. It's what we do. Thank you. And a final question, Kimberly. Over the past several years, uh, Sacramento has been dealing with um, infill projects and the rail yards, um, with redevelopment on mm -hmm. K Street and elsewhere in the city. Um, we, as you mentioned, have an economic downturn coming. What strategies would you pursue in order to continue with projects like that into the future, given that the economy seems to be tanking? Well, there's certainly a lot of, of concerns about the economy, not only in Sacramento, but uh, throughout the nation, throughout the state. It's the reason that we have, um, a, that we had a shortfall in our budget was really because of property taxes, utility user taxes, and sales taxes either flattening out or going down uh, as the city continues to grow. Um, the good news is that from an economic point of view, the city of Sacramento is very stable and frankly very strong. Uh, we are still um, issuing as many commercial permits as we did before. Our, our residential permits have gone down, but the commercial permits have, have remained the same. Uh, we are adding retail, we are adding office buildings. Um, the prog progress on K Street is continuing. Uh, we do have redevelopment funding, which we have uh, able to reinvest in areas such as the rail yards, as well as K Street and other places downtown, and other neighborhoods like Del Paso and Alkali and, and Oak Park. Um, what, the one thing that, that I've been able to do over the last couple of years is to position Sacramento with enough infrastructure funding that we can start laying the groundwork for the rail yards. We received $70 million worth of Proposition 1C bond money from the state for the rail yards. We received another $19 million for Township 9, which is a residential mixed-use development on the corner of 7th and Richards. It's going to bring 3,000 housing units. Those projects are going to be able to go forward because of that, the, that huge influence of funding. Uh, we also have just received $13 million from the federal government to help us purchase foreclosed homes and fix them up and turn them back to other homeowners. So we have been able to bring a lot of uh, resources into the city of Sacramento. I've worked very hard with the governor's office, with our legislature, uh, with Congress to make sure that funding would come to Sacramento. Uh, and with the investments that we did uh, in the neighborhood, three new libraries under construction right now, the Crocker Art Museum expansion, uh, a number of other parks and community centers being expanded, we do have quite a bit of construction still underway, and we're doing our best to position our city to be ready for the economic upturn when it comes. So we've got a lot of infrastructure money to spend between the levees, the rail yards, uh, and other places in the city of Sacramento, and we're going to move forward with getting those done. Thank you. And you do have a one minute time for a closing statement. Well, thank you. Um, I really appreciate people who are paying attention uh, to this debate uh, or undebate uh, and listening to, to what I have to say about the city of Sacramento and where we've been and where we've gone. Um, I hope that you will look back eight years ago and think about how the city was, how your neighborhood was, uh, and look at the progress we've been able to make, the progress in code enforcement and home inspections, the, the progress uh, with all of the parks and the community centers, the libraries, the three new fire stations. Uh, uh, over the last two years, we were able to reduce violent crime because we were able to add police officers. We're hoping to get back to that again, but, but the reality is crime did drop in the last two years. Um, and we have a lot of projects underway. A lot of things are happening on K Street and throughout the neighborhoods, the older commercial corridors. Uh, it's a better city, and I think people enjoy Sacramento more. I think they have more fun here, and I think they want to stay here. Uh, and we have a lot of interest of people who want to visit here as well, which helps our tourism industry. Uh, I'm very proud to have the support not only of Doris Matsui in Washington, but of Senator Daryl Steinberg and Assemblymember Dave Jones in the legislature, of five members of my city council, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors and SMUD, uh, elected officials throughout the region um, are supporting me, um, as are a number of the unions uh, and a number of neighborhood leaders and community leaders throughout the city of Sacramento. I'm very proud to have that support. I'm looking forward to a third term and moving Sacramento forward. It's a great city and we can make it even better.
Thank you. Thank you, Heather Fargo. And I'd like to thank our panelists at this time as well. Mary Lynn Valinga, Jim Cox, Kimberly Nalder, thank you very much for joining us today. I would like to remind the audience here and viewers at home that you may watch this broadcast again each Sunday until Election Day at noon on Metro Cable 14. Today's forum has been designed to impart to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that a democracy truly depends upon the active and informed participation of its citizens. We hope that the insights that you have gained from this forum will help you in the decisions that you make for the ballot on November 4th. Please remember to vote and help make this democracy work. Thank you. <laughs>